This documentary meme edit you're watching is edited by me, but actually originally found in a viral video made by Sunny V2. As an editor who's edited documentary videos with millions of views, I've broken down this edit into three easy steps. In step one, we do all of the preliminary work in Photoshop to separate the layers. In step two, we bring those files into After Effects and use the puppet tool to create the animation. Finally, in step three, we add some final tweaks to finish off the edit. The project files and assets are linked in the description below if you want to follow along too. Now let's get into it. First, download Upscale. And once you've got it, open it up and upscale both of your images, the meme and the person's head who you're going to edit onto it. Now, drag and drop your meme image into Photoshop. Now grab the crop tool and extend the canvas just so we can get more of his body visible in the frame. Go up to select, then select a mask. We want to mask out the entire body, but leave the head untouched. Once the mask is created, select it and switch to the brush tool. Set your brush size to around 30 and make sure black and white are selected as your colors. You can use X to toggle between them. Use white to paint things into the mask and then use black to take things out. Smooth the edges so it looks clean. Now we're going to import the new head. In this case, it's KSI. So import the image and again go to select, then select and mask. And carefully isolate just the head. Use the brush tool again to tidy up the edges. Now in this case, the head is facing the wrong way. So just go to edit, then transform and flip horizontal. Position it roughly where it needs to go. Now it's time to separate the arm for animation. So just like before, go to select, then select a mask and this time isolate the arm. Clean it up using the brush tool again. Now you can press the eye icon so this layer becomes invisible and then grab the eraser tool, select the bottom layer and erase the part where the hand overlaps the neck. Now we're going to generate over where the arm used to be. So use the lasso tool to make a rough selection around where the arm was. Make sure the selection is fairly wide. You don't want the AI to generate a new arm. Use generative fill to recreate the jacket so it looks like the arm was never there. And if you have any issues, try and use the lasso tool to create a bigger selection and just keep generating until you get something that looks good. Don't worry if it generates and spills over, just use the eraser tool to get rid of it. Now we're going to merge and organize our layers. So merge the AI generated background on the base image using Ctrl E. Then apply the layer masks to both the head and the arm layers. Don't forget to rename them so you stay organized. Now, one by one on the head and the arm layers, you want to go into image and then auto tone and auto contrast them. This just makes sure that the colors match. This helps the skin tone match the head better. Now, just double click into the head layer and add a drop shadow to help it blend where the neck is. And once that's done, save your PSD file and let's head into After Effects. Open up After Effects and create a new composition. Set it to 1920 by 1080 pixels, 60 FPS and a duration of 5 seconds. Import the PSD file and choose editable layer styles. Go into the pre-comp, copy all the layers and paste them into the main composition. Then scale it and position it so it's in the center of the screen. Firstly, we're going to animate the finger tap. At the start of your timeline, grab the puppet tool. Place your pins like this, one at the fingertip, one at the base of the arm, and three along the middle finger, right next to the pointing finger. These pins help control the motion without the whole arm flopping around. Now we're going to create the tapping motion. So go to frame 20 and move pin number one there. Now jump back to the beginning and slightly lower the X position value. This will nudge the finger left. You can even use the puppet tool pin to move it manually. Tweak the Y position too if needed. Just make sure the finger doesn't stretch or shrink unnaturally. Then go to frame 50 and copy and paste the first keyframe. Easy ease the frames using F9. Next, open the graph editor and shape the curves. You want a steep dip into the second keyframe, then a smooth easy ease curve into the third. Alt plus left click on the position stopwatch and type in loop out brackets. Now the finger tap will repeat seamlessly. Now we will animate the face. Move your playhead to 1 second and 45 frames. Grab the puppet tool and start placing pins. Firstly, we're going to go all around the edges of the face. Then we'll place three around the mouth, one under the nose, four around each eye, and three on the eyebrow. Finally, we'll place one between the brows. Move to three seconds on the timeline. Pull the mouth pins up into a smile and raise the left eyebrow. You may need to change the position of the uppermost pin on the eye. Just move it until it sits in a natural position. Then select all keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. Now we will add a little bit of head movement. So select the head layer and press R for rotation. Alt plus left click on the stopwatch and type in wiggle 
brackets 1,3. This gives the head a subtle bobbing motion and adds a little bit of life. Now to finish off, select all your layers and hit Ctrl plus Shift plus C to pre-compose. Then select the pre-composition, go to Layer, then Layer Styles, then Inner Shadow, and set the size to 10. That gives the whole thing a bit more depth. Now you can add the rest of your animation to the edit. If you like the look of the rest of the edit which you saw at the beginning using all that premium text, then head to the link in the description and sign up to the DocuEditor's waitlist. This is a course where I'm going to go completely in depth in making text look super premium just like in the beginning. Not only that, I'm going to walk you through everything about documentary editing from the first principles to the final export. The link is in the description below and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.